Wrestling fans around the corner or around the world, them damn righty. I'm doing a dapwards. Dapwards? MJ in the house. Mighty, can That's you a believe reverse dab. that it is Halloween week? What are you going to be for Halloween? A monster. A monster. Well, especially if I get a hard on. Well, you <laughs> heard it from him, folks. A brand new wrestling inside is potty with Mighty is now. Wrestling fans, the countdown is on to Boston Wrestling MWF's 20th anniversary bash Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Join WWE Hall of Famers Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, and Bob Backlund, Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, the Berserker, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Aldo Montoya, plus JTG of Crime Time, two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, John Cena Sr., and Oscar of Men on a Mission for live wrestling, an autographed photo fan fest, VIP Q&A session with the kickoff to the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive in a must-see event two decades in the making. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live in Melrose November 13th. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to a Halloween week edition of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty. I'm Dan Marotti along with Mr. Yeah. Marty Janetti. MJ and Al. Well, you How love do you know this is going to show on Halloween? Because I know the date of the episode. Unless okay. something. And right now, Major it's, happens. It's, we're, you know what? I can't go to Con, uh, Connecticut now. Why? There's flood, it's flooded all over the place. The whole state. And pretty much. Well, I hope Matt Daddy made it home all right. Where, where'd he go? Hopefully his socks didn't get wet. <laughs> Boy, he Jer did have some fuck Jerry up. Sags might throw some choppies at him again. <laughs> I don't know. Like he was a dot board. But it is flooded <laughs> over there. Right now, y'all seeing it afterwards, but what was that? Idaho? The Ida, what was that uh, hurricane called? Ida. Ida, huh? Ida yeah, yeah. came through up here and, and it flooded. Which will be about two months by the oh, time yeah. <laughs> the fans see this. see this. But that's all right. We have to pre-take so many episodes ahead of time. I well, that's it's usually what happens with a hurricane. Some floods come. <laughs> but yeah. I'm supposed to be in Harper. How am I getting there? Uh, in an automobile. Well, pff, knew that, but who? <laughs> uh, the, the people that are putting the signing together. Uh, John? I, that I'm not 100% oh, sure shit, of. Yeah. I'm not getting a flight home. I'm just going to move here. <laughs> That's, you're just going to stay. We're never going to let you leave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't um, mind, though, but I got shit you know, Well, you know what? Tony needs a roommate up in Maine. To go, to go now, get, you talk to about go what, what a reality <laughs> TV show that would be. Yeah. Tony on the top <laughs> floor and Can you, you on the bottom that? floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, did I mess up yes, um, our last taping? What happened? When I told about uh, what Rufus R. Jones told me. Where they were having no, sex I with mean, a girl. It's and, the story and, that you were told. That, Tony I, told me did. that um, Rufus himself, try, he woke up one night with Rufus standing over him, pleasuring himself. <laughs> oh, boy. But did, he did. Do you know Ray Steve? You know who Ray Steve? Of course. Ray Steve, Ray Steve, one of the all-time greats. And um, 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 Nick Block, one Pat Patterson. Pat, okay. They were a great tag team yeah. uh, out west. But Ray, Ray told me the story. He said... He woke up, and gosh, I hate telling this, but let me tell it. He said he woke up in the middle of the night, and he was getting blown. He didn't remember bringing, you know, girls back to the room. And he went, he went over and turned the light switch on, and Pat was blowing him. And he's like, well, shit, a blowjob's a blowjob. He turned the light back off. <laughs> Ray let he, Pat finish? Yes. Oh, <laughs> it's, a blow, it's what he said, a blowjob's a blowjob. <laughs> well, I certainly Did you say professionals? <laughs> well, I tell you, you never know what to expect on this show, folks, as we dive back into, it's a Halloween week, we go a little further in time holiday-wise, to Thanksgiving night 1990 Survivor Series. We talked about Hector Guerrero popping out of an egg we, as the gobbledygooker. Yeah, the <laughs> we talked about the final night of one Sorry. of the finest people I've ever met Who? Uh, in professional wrestling, Mr. Bill Eady. He is now, did, I don't think we actually finished because and you I'm, went... Well, on one of your crazy discussions, but were you familiar with the, um, I don't know if rumor is the right word to put it, but um, Bill was being groomed for an office position, and they wound up, I guess, during all those cuts, 
that happened in the fall of 90 when they cut the C-team shows. They took that away from him. Did you hear anything about that? Wrestling fans, sorry to interrupt your favorite episodes of Wrestling Insiders, but truly need your help to keep wrestling legends working in these shows produced. Get early uninterrupted, full screen access to Wrestling Insiders, along with our studio shoot interview DVD library, as seen by millions online, exclusives, and more by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Check out the link to the Boston Wrestling eBay store in the description box below. If you're watching the premiere, the Super Chat button is open for business, or send a donation of any size using Venmo at Boston Wrestling or PayPal using BW at BostonWrestling.com. Again, sorry to interrupt, but we can't keep giving you these free talk shows without your support. Now, back to the show. No. Um, no. No, but he would have been good. I think he would have been great. Very good businessman. I, I keep combing my hair because last night I went home, and and our brother in there, I'm not going to say his Captain name. Captain Lou. Captain, we don't want to say his name. Cap, well, the was not captain's the captain happening, move, baby. But, you should have seen him in Las Vegas at the Cauliflower <laughs> just, Alley Club reunion. I went to sleep. Him uh, and his friend, Din, were out of control. <laughs> Who? The captain and his friend, Din. He said his head no look. <laughs> Din Fan. Din Fan. But last night, yeah. I told you what happened. Yeah. Oh yeah. You went to the hotel. Strange women showed up. Uh, well, when they weren't strange, they but were it was a women. bunch of girls. Like it was a group of them. It's like five or six. You should have called them. <laughs> Cap- <laughs> no, Captain said, "Were well, they professionals?" <laughs> <laughs> the captains, he'll take any of them. He was out on the strip nailing them. I couldn't. I've never seen anything like it. What's, there's no strip here. AML-Creative.com. You get real creative in Vegas. He really put his photography used to work, but we won't talk about that. He's got some pictures. That he's he's got that, some pictures he can't put on Facebook. Let's oh put it boy, like that. I, I got some of those. Well, you and Melania Trump? Why'd you have to bring that? Well, Look, I'm, I, I cha- I'm not changing his shirt ever, because you still got the same shirt from yesterday. No, actually, I don't. It's different. It's just it's more stripes. Yeah, it's, I'm just a, I'm like a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just striped. <laughs> last <laughs> night we went to, where did we go last night? Fridays. TGI oh, Fridays. That's right. yeah. And you were with Al Snow's best friend, Quincy Rustani. He was, he was so cool, man. Yeah. And I tell you this, I was shocked well, that, that we had a very kind of an emotional moment as we learned of the, oh, the yeah. passing of Daphne. And you yeah. got up and composed yourself. And Quincy just marched right in, not having any idea what was going on, and started to very loudly tell the <laughs> folks at home that, what we were doing on November 13th was for the kids, and he's partially right because oh, you know, did that? we get the Holiday Headlocks toy drive coming up very shortly in honor of this man, the man that we miss every day, the <laughs> man that I love. Love you, my brother. My friend Percy, um, Paul Bearer, but that's but da- coming soon. Dan bought me like four drinks that I had to pay for. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you this. That waitress was Is that not true? happy with you. Why? Because you were a little too personal with her. The black girl? Yes. The one that looked like she Precious. Look like what? Precious. You've what never else? seen that movie? Uh-uh. No. I don't oh, know. she's big like that. A little, yeah, a little on the, the bigger side. But. Well, that's what I was trying to tell well, her. I, I don't think she wanted to be asked that question while I, she was I, serving I hamburgers. But, <laughs> you know. But. <laughs> I was just telling her, come to the gym with me in the morning. We'll work on you this. You didn't really say that to her, did you? You were sitting right there. You told her to go to the gym? With me. I, I'm, oh. I'm a personal trainer. Marty, That's what I, I do. I understand that, but she was at work. Do you know how embarrassed she must have been to have I didn't one say of her it. I didn't say it out say, loud. let's go to the gym? If you remember, we had a whole section to ourselves. Remember that table? It was like uh, nine of us. Six, but... <laughs> Who's counting when you're having fun? Oh, we did have God. fun, though. She did laugh a lot. At the end, she was not happy. Matt Daddy even pointed it out. Because you didn't tip her. Huh? We still didn't tip Kaloons. Well, I, I sent a message along. They know I'm coming back. So they, they're, aware well, that, they're aware that we're aware. So no okay. issues. Okay. And they also retweeted us on about what. Because I put out there what, how great they were to Kalo- us. If, whenever you're in Boston... Where is it, Melrose? It is the world-famous Kowloon Entertainment and Dining Complex on Route 1 North, Saugus, Massachusetts. Oh, there you go. One of and Captain Lou's favorite places. 
Are he's, you like that? Too? No, he's, he's very he's saying no food. again. <laughs> well, he would have been there for the free meal, I bet. <laughs> that but if you, happening, baby. But, but for wrestling fans like y'all, um, when you go in there, oh my God, it's like a wall. There's pictures of all yeah. the wrestlers. You know what's really nice? Uh, when he was here six days before he passed, myself, oh. Andy Wong, the, uh, the co-owner that you met, and New Jack, we all took a picture together in front of that For wall. there? Oh. Yeah, and they put that on Twitter, which was oh, nice. Real? Oh, But uh, back to, again, let's try and stay on topic. Okay. Do you really think Bill Eady would have made a good agent or a producer yeah. or whatever? Well, he kind of was anyway, producer. He, he kind of was. How? Like, well, when I, you know I got in trouble over in Austria. Oh, Yes. You know, the guy got fell over and the Bell balcony. And Bill was the agent for that? Yeah, yes. For that show? For that yeah, tour, he, I should say? Here's what I did. And well, I guess we've, I, we've told this story a bunch of times, and we just did no, it recently. No, so. but what Bill did. Yeah, we've uh, told that, too. The the bus couldn't leave? Right, right. Oh, okay. And Bill found you, and you were on the payphone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was calling my brother. Because <laughs> Gino <laughs> always got me. He figured out a way oh, to get by his home. I tell you. Bill walks by, and I saw Bill. I'm like, hey, he goes, you got to come back. <laughs> Bill has had a rough go of it. He had COVID earlier this year. Then he had maybe the world's worst experience I'm, WrestleMania weekend. Well, what um, well, he tried. They tried to turn it into a family vacation, and his car broke oh. down, so he had to spend the first day at the dealership. Then his hotel <laughs> was covered in insects, and he had to go oh to a new God. hotel. <laughs> it just it turned into a disaster for poor, poor Bill. Bill, he's then such a good guy. Man. Bill was here in the studio for two days in May, a couple of weeks after New Jack. He went to visit his daughter in the Carolinas, and he started to have heart problems. Yeah, that's when you, yeah, you told me about that, yeah. So it's been a rough, it was at least the first rough first half of the year for Bill. We can only hope that things are improving for the man. Love we you, look Bill. forward to seeing, along with you, Demolition Axe, Demolition Smash, yes. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jake the Snake Roberts, the Doctor of Style Slick and more. That's going to be so good to Saturday see Saturday night, November the 13th. Literally now, Marty, we're talking about... Now we it's are, like a week or... We're just so, about two, little two over weeks two away. weeks away. Yeah. yeah. Trick or treat, baby. Forget about Milky <laughs> Ways and candy bars. Get your VIP packages and tickets now as we celebrate two decades of Boston wrestling at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Saturday night, November the 13th, baby. There's only one place we're going. That's back to the 80s for WrestleFest. <laughs> but anyway... Back to Survivor Series 1990. Okay. Uh, Demolition X, sorry to go. I thought it was, as a fan, I was disappointed to see him go. Uh, I don't think Smash and Crush had the chemistry as Demolition as they began to job them out. And then ultimately, in less than a year, Demolition was no more. That very sad ending to a great, great, I think, the greatest tag team in they, WWE well, history. Well, you know what? And everybody always says it was either Road Warriors or them. But it was actually Sean and I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think, if you're looking at strictly WWF, right. I don't think the Legion of Doom really did all that much. They did. That shit. As far Sold as... Sold everything out. <laughs> as far as technical... You being a promoter, you know what's important. I know what's important, Sell, but they had, they, they their runs the, weren't that lengthy, and the second what? one certainly was not impressive at all. Oh, the second time through, you mean? Yeah, it was... Yeah. It, well, it, yeah, it started it, off hot, but then like a lot. That you can only see well, them do by that time, the same you know, thing so many times. You know, Animal, he, he didn't do drugs. Yeah. And, and um, you know, me and Hawk did a little bit. He enjoyed bit. his medicine. <laughs> yeah. And, and me too back then. Yeah. But um, oh, that's when they started having problems because Hawk would, me and right, Hawk. Right, missing shots. And Joe was. No, I don't the, think he missed them. He, he missed just, a lot. Oh, there was was late. suspensions. He was and they late were, a lot. Well, it was, Joe had to wind up doing a lot of singles work at times. One time we was in Green Bay. We had to wrestle in Green Bay. Me and Hawk had been out all night. Bobby Medicine? Yeah, a lot, yeah. A lot of cocaine. Can I say cocaine? <laughs> a lot of coke. Are you okay with that, Cap? Okay. It's all we, right. He knows Den. We did a <laughs> we did uh, we did a lot of cocaine. That's what we used to do back then. And uh, I can't say certain things. <laughs> no, because no, um, feel free. Well, anyway, we had uh, a bunch of women in the room. Yeah. And How so many we, would you we, say? Four, three or four. But it was two of us, me and him, yeah. Hawk. Um, so we were a little bit late. To, wherever the hell we were, we had to drive up to Green Bay. I think we were in Chicago, and that's about a, about a three-hour drive. A little bit drive. of a drive, yep, yep, yeah. yep. What does that mean, touchdown? No, 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 no. Just, you, just, you keep going, oh, oh, and I'll oh, worry okay. about that part of it. Um, yeah, so we, we were a little bit late. Not a lot, 
but it was a TV taping, and you're supposed to be there at two o'clock. So you oh, got all these damn no interviews good. all day long. Then you don't even time seven o'clock goes and the show starts, you're worn out. But uh, we 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 were about an hour late. I, I hate to tell this, you know, Joe, they both died. Joe died on us recently. Like I said, Joe was originally booked to be part of the Back to the Eighty show, so that that really yeah. Hurt. Joe wanted it was very interested. Such in a trying, good guy, man. He was interested in trying to do a show like this with us, and both of them actually were very good. But I didn't really know Mike all that well, but Joe, I, I did. Yeah, well, they were both were great guys. But anyway, so me and me and Hawk or Mike or Hawk, we just go with Hawk, Road Warrior Hawk. Yeah, that's how y'all know him. Um, I know. Sometimes we we say the shoot names and the fans. I wonder Luda, if yeah. they know who we're talking about. Right. So he's talking about Road Warrior Hawk, Hawk when he yeah. says Mike. Yeah, and we um, we got to Green Bay. We went that long, way long, three-hour drive up to Green Bay from Chicago. A little bit late. Like, they want you there at 2 o'clock. We probably got there at 3.30, 3.15. And uh, I love Joe. You know, he's not here to defend himself, but I wouldn't lie on him. He went to Vince and said, well, I'm ready. I don't know where my partner is. You know, uh, do interviews, uh, do interviews. They, because they did more than most people. But um, when we got there, everybody ran up to Hawk. Not me. <laughs> they ran up to Hawk and said, "Your your uh, partner, uh, he, he um, ratted you out. He ratted you out." And, and he goes, "What do you mean?" And he says, "Well, he said you wasn't here. Or he was ready to do interviews, but you wasn't here." And so you know, Vince got a little upset with you. Well, I don't think he wanted the residual heat. Well, but I'm going to tell you what, I, okay, what, what we saw. Uh, went to the dressing room. You know, I'm with uh, Mike. We, uh, you know, we went in the dressing room. Joe was sitting there in the middle. He had a chair out in the middle. Like, he's sitting out in the middle. And Hulk, you know, we just heard that. And Hulk walked right up to him. I don't know which one y'all think is the baddest, but I'm going to just tell you this. Uh, Hulk walked, walked right in front of him. He goes, get your ass up. I want you standing when I knock you out. And, and, and Joe just put his head down. He wouldn't stand up. But it was, it was because of that. I think in my conversations that I've had with Joe, he was just frustrated. He didn't want Hawk's problems to affect his livelihood. Yeah, you that's think that's a fair way to put it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, wrestling fans, we got a cue from the man himself, Captain Lou. The man that, let me tell you, I don't know, there could be some little Lou's in Las Vegas at some, this point. Some, what? some little Lou's. How many girls did you fuck out there? Oh shit, it was that. Was we on camera? That's all right. You should see what you can edit it. What How many girls did you get out there? How many, Lou? He said zero. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> all right, wrestling fans, we'll be back after this brief time out with more Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Stand by. In the house. The World Wrestling Federation was live with a matinee at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Sunday, October the 21st, 1990. In the opening contest, Davey Boy Smith beat Haku. Shane Douglas with the win over the Brooklyn Brawler. Superfly Jimmy Snuka beat the Black Demon, replacing Hakeem. The Warlord victorious over Coco Beware. WWF Tag Team Champions The Hart Foundation retain the titles over Rhythm and Blues. WWF Intercontinental Champion The Texas Tornado battled Mr. Perfect to a double countout. And in the main event, WWF World Champion The Ultimate Warrior in the Legion of Doom beat Demolition in an elimination match. If you are in Toronto Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working at our eBay store and on our Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders, Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. 
for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the wrestling fans. The countdown is on to Boston Wrestling MWF's 20th anniversary bash Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Join WWE Hall of Famers Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, and Bob Backlund, Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, the Berserker, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Aldo Montoya, plus JTG of Crime Time, two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, John John Cena Sr. and Oscar of Men on a Mission for live wrestling, an autographed photo fan fest, VIP Q&A session with the kickoff to the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive in a must-see event two decades in the making. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live in Melrose November 13th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You gotta see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. On October 28, 2020, Wrestling's Scariest Night was back with WWE NXT Halloween Havoc. This limited edition collector's autograph poster is number 12 of only 100 produced and is signed by all nine superstars featured on the poster, including Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Gonzalez, and your Halloween Havoc host, Shotzi Blackheart. Comes with WWE Authentication Hologram on the back. You'll also receive an on-air thank you from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus mystery autograph photo. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible now. Wrestling fans, welcome back as we continue to break down Survivor Series 1991 match. Uh, very tough. You talk about tough times. Brett the Hitman Hot lost one of his brothers, uh, I oh. believe, the night before Survivor Series 1990. Who? Um, Owen? No, 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 no. Uh, oh, the one that had... The one, um, what are you looking at, Captain? No, the Captain's just making sure the set's looking beautiful so you look nice and handsome well, for all the happen. women at home, like <laughs> like Tania and Precious oh, boy. from uh, <laughs> TGI Fridays, in case she's walking, watching, and you can tell her to go to the gym to help boost her self-esteem. But um, <laughs> Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, victorious in that match. It was the Million Dollar Team against what? Dusty Rhodes' team that night. Probably the certainly one of the, the, the biggest nights in wrestling history in a lot of ways because Ted DiBiase may have been the sole survivor of his team pinning Bret Hart, but that was the night he introduced to the world, managed by, at that point, Bruce Pritchard, brother love, The Undertaker. Yeah, I remember that. But you know, I got so mad at Dusty Rhodes. Why? Because when he came to, um, from that, uh, what was it, NWA or yeah. WCW, when he came up for that little while, when they put the yeah. yellow, yellow pole down, um, and we were just talking about Road Warrior Hawk. Yeah, Hawk didn't like him, and 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 when he would you know change clothes, he goes, "Look at that fucking dungeon door ass he's got," because he had a flat ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and but all the guys were mad because you, when you're a booker, well, you probably know this. When you're a booker, a lot of people ain't happy. It's hard to make everybody happy. Yes. Everybody wants the best spot to yes. make the most money. Yes. And so Dust, nobody liked him. I did, and we would sit there and play. Remember that paper football? Yeah. And you make a little triangle, and you yep, yep. got to hang. That's what me and him did all the time. We never even played cards. We played a little thumb football. But once he went back to WCW, was yeah. it WCW then? Yeah, it was a WCW when he went back. Okay, yeah. uh, and and Ric Flair actually called for me to come up. And, and but Dusty again was in the office. Wrestling fans, sorry to interrupt your favorite episodes of Wrestling Insiders, but truly need your help to keep wrestling legends working in these shows produced. Get early uninterrupted full screen access to Wrestling Insiders, along with our studio shoot interview DVD library, as seen by millions online, exclusives, and more by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Check out the link to the Boston Wrestling eBay store in the description box below. If you're watching the premiere, the Super Chat button is open for business, or send a donation of any size using Venmo at Boston Wrestling or PayPal using BW at BostonWrestling.com. 
Talkingalternative.com. Again, sorry to interrupt, but we can't keep giving you these free talk shows without your support. Now, back to the show. And he, they said, call like, I don't know, 10 in the morning, whatever it was. I called at 10, 15, and wouldn't take my call. I said I was late, and I didn't, I didn't get hired over that. Wow. And I'm the only damn person that would fucking talk to him. And he did that to me. But it's okay. All right. Well, back to Survivor Series 1990. Your initial thoughts when you saw WWF create this dead man, The Undertaker. Did you think that Coco this was Coco Beware a, a got gimmick? mad at him. Well, let me just get to this, oh, oh, through this first. Uh, a character that was But I think dead. that was his first did match. Did you see? He, did, he worked some TV tapings. And the funny thing is, do you know what his original name was? Mark Calloway. No, no, in WWF. Uh-uh. Kane the Undertaker. Isn't that funny? And yeah, they wound yeah, up yeah. obviously developing Kane uh, seven years later at Bad Blood on pay-per-view. But he was originally known as Kane the Undertaker. And then they took mm -hmm. the Kane away, and he just was the Undertaker. But your initial thoughts on this tremendous, uh, t I, I would say a guy Character maybe a little bit on the green side, but a guy with a lot of upside, a lot of potential. You mean then? Yeah. Yeah. Did you think that 30 years later you'd still be talking about him literally as, well, right, he's about he just, a, a year out of the main event scene in WWE. Him and Sean both were trying to wait for each other to quit. They were like, I'm not quitting until he quits. <laughs> Neither one would quit. Not well, quit, but retire. Undertaker lasted an extra 10 years, so I think he won the war. Because <laughs> he was staying steady. But Coco had his first match on, him, on TV. Coco was on Dusty's team at Survivor Series, yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, and Undertaker eliminated him. So right, and he, gave, he did that thing. On the ropes, you mean, when he dropped them? No, no, no. Uh, the, that the tombstone? tombstone? Yeah. yeah. And Coco came back to his right. And, and, and Taker was new. I mean, yeah. he was new. Um, you know, and we all respect everybody, you know yeah. that. Um, and Taker came in, thought it was, you know, a good show. Coco walks in like, motherfucker! Mo oh, shit. You go ahead. Okay. Mother... Well, I'm just telling you what Coco said. Motherfucker! And we're all like, Coco, what's wrong? What's wrong, brother? Fucking don't know how to hold me when you drop me. You almost broke my fucking neck. And Taker was such a nice guy. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, Coco got mad as shit. Well, you know what? I'm sure there were a lot of nerves for The Undertaker. It was his television Pro probably. debut, his pay-per-view debut. Plus, uh, and he was plus in you ever done that tombstone? Believe it or not, no. What? <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I haven't, believe it or not, no. I've never but, uh, tombstoned anyone. But, but I did it before he ever did it, and I did it to Pat Sinaka. Did you? Um, yeah, we had that thing where you got up on the suplex, and you roll over, and then you got them, and give them the, uh, t a, the tombstone. I did the same thing uh, Taker did to Coco. I forgot to hold him real. You got to hold him real tight around the back. Oh, you must, uh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you spike him. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and Pat Sinaka's one of my best friends, but, but I... It was the first time I did that move, and I didn't, I didn't hold him. <laughs> he, you could see it's in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> you see it. He boinked. Thank God he got a strong neck because he boinked. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, again, what were your, was your initial impression the first time hot? you saw this man? Is, is this kind of unique out of this world character, a dead man in the world of professional wrestling? And I actually tried to help him uh, on a few things, you know, when he first was, you know, was coming in, because he would, remember he did the uh, face paint where it was like pale, you know. It was it was very pale, yeah. Pale, and then he kept getting to put it on his neck. And I'm like, take her, this character is so good, you got to cover it to your neck. And I, and I think he got offended. Because he's really? like, he, well, I mean, not Mark's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, Taker's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, but I think he, you know, I think he got a little offended. Uh, but I was trying to help him. I was just saying, you, you got pale ass paint on, and then your neck is red, or, or not red, but, but you know, uh, regular skin, skin color, color yeah. yeah. And so we're like, cover it. I mean, you got to take care of the character. But he, he uh, but, and, and he was nice as he could be about it. He goes, okay. <laughs> but he didn't do it anyway. <laughs> well, what did you think of the character itself? Did you think it had great potential? Did you think it was something that would have the longevity cool. of 30 years? I didn't think that, but I thought it was, um, nobody did. 
yeah. but but um, and that's amazing because he changed it. Remember, he was American badass for a minute, yeah, and then he didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Well, think it didn't last long. Remember, it was it was it was about what six months maybe. No, it was two thousand through two thousand and four. It had a, he had a pretty good run. That long, yeah. That, and you drove the motorcycle. Yeah, he even cut his hair short. And mm. Wasn't my cup of tea, but, but I guess no, no, I no, no. people <laughs> that like biking, biking. But the, but the it. thing is, he like repackaged himself. Yeah, and and you know what? I'll say this: when he took away that Undertaker persona for four it, years, it almost from the died fans, out. When he came back. Oh, he they was popped more it. over than ever before. Yeah, they popped yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So maybe... Hey, Captain, do yeah. we got a fan? It's hot in here. Do we got a fan? Yeah, we, his name is Din. <laughs> Din Fan. Well, can you blow me? But he me? goes by Alex Knight Fan. Din, can you blow me? <laughs> uh. <laughs> what did we eat but, last um, night? Oh, yeah, let's go back. We had, you didn't have anything. Yes, I did. Yeah, you had a liquid diet. <laughs> Uh, and you offended poor Precious, but <laughs> I did. Her name's uh, not Precious. What did you th again? What did you think of the concept of this character? A dead I thought man? it was pretty cool because he you did it, and he did it. He developed it as he was going. You can't do it one day. Um, all characters, y'all you know, will notice it. I mean, even David Letterman got better as he as he was going, but um, it, you get better the more you do it. I tell you one that was hard. To develop was gold dust. It was Dustin, Dustin Rhodes. Remember when he did gold dust? We'll get there in '95 when we talk about that. Well, what I'm saying is this okay. character development. That um, evolved too. Over he the time, didn't know yeah. what to do. They wanted him to go. Remember that when he had to do that, he, and they had gold flakes fall. I, I had to wrestle him in in his pay per view debut. Yeah, yeah in, in in your house I or something was, like that. Was it Winnipeg, Manitoba? I don't know. Well, that October, part, I know but, it was October in '95. But I know the gold flakes were falling off. <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> but well, he was so confused with that. Well, Taker was never confused, but he kept developing and developing and developing. I just remember... It was remember when he, how he sat up? Yeah. That was a badass yeah. thing. Michael but Myers. he didn't do that at first. Yeah. You know, the character development. I think, simply, he just could have watched, and I'm sure he probably did, Michael some of Myers. the classic horror movies of the time, Friday the 13th, yeah, yeah, well, Halloween, yeah, that's how you, try yeah. and get some of those spots that's, in. That's what I teach my kids uh, when I tell them, watch movies, watch a character, decide which one you can be. Um, but watch them, develop behind that, because, you know, there it is for you. <laughs> There's a blueprint. Just take it. Make it better. Make it your own. But, because it's so hard, I can't think of anybody that came out of the blocks 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Can you? I think Undertaker came in with a huge. Well, push. he did. He, but well, yeah. I, I'll say this. I remember. But I, was, but I, I mean, the together, character, the character yeah. itself. I remember that night, that Thanksgiving night, me and my friends yeah, got together did. and started to. Do we, we got air conditioning? Uh, this is about as. You know what? Maybe if uh, uh, Captain Lou could kill the house lights, it would cool it a little bit. But then they can't see us. Uh, no, the house lights. Where are they at? The house lights. Captain Lou, baby, I tell you, the <laughs> captain's happy. They just turned the lights off, but it's in the control did you, room. Did you ever see the movie The Goonies? Uh, is that with uh, Cindy Lauper? Uh, yeah. yeah, she uh, was involved in it. He yeah, was I, actually Data. I saw, the, I saw the, um, the music video? The, yes. Yeah, he was Data in the movie The Goonies, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Look at it, he's saying no. <laughs> Dan, you're lying a lot. I would never would say that. <laughs> you just if said it. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't say that. Um, but yeah, character development. But and I just remember me, Thanksgiving night after you know we had our food and whatnot. Me and my friends got together down the street ooh, ooh. to watch Survivor Series. And it's like that's Mean Mark from WCW. So maybe it took a while for fans to take to the character, or do you think he was over instantly? Well, that part I don't know. I don't remember because um, I mean I liked it. You know, like I said, I tried to get hey cover your neck up because remember. The whole pale thing, and then the next, you know, um, and that's all I told him. You know, and, and Mark's a nice guy, and it seemed like he got upset that, you know, I was no. teaching him or telling him something, and and so I, I left him alone after that. But um, I I liked it. Well, I don't, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else, but I liked it. I thought it was a cool gimmick. I just, again, 
you know, as a young kid, and I think I was still in elementary school at that point. It's like, you know, it was me and Mark and WCW a few you? months ago. Yeah. But let me ask you this. Percy and I had this conversation many times. Yeah, he's Who the one that could tell was you. was the greatest attraction in wrestling history? Was it The Undertaker or was it Andre? Probably Andre. You th I think Andre, too. But Percy, but just you can imagine he, what his answer might have been. We, we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's yeah, but Andre, Andre, Andre was, I hate to say, I'm not, I'm not going to say a freak of, what do they call that word, anomaly? You use yeah. all of them weird words. Yeah. Anomaly. Oh, okay. What, what does that mean, touchdown? <laughs> uh, but, you know, Andre, I think, we, he was protected so much. Um, he wasn't seen as often as Undertaker Ooh, uh, was. Uh, Andre, Andre yeah. yeah. You know, Andre worked the territory you, schedule you that know, Undertaker never did. And so I, I, I would have to go with, I in that it. debate, I'd have to go with Andre. Yeah, I mean, pretty much because Warrior, I, I, I've already told you all this story. Warrior was so scared of him, and Warrior was, you know, a big old boy. Um, that he would buy him because Andre loved to drink wine. Loved his wine. Yes, and he always had a cooler. And he would drink like ten, eight, ten bottles before he went through his match, and play cards. That's all he did: play cards, drink. Naked, huh? Naked. I never saw him naked. You never he saw wouldn't him take his clothes the, off. No. When he, he, I he thought would he used go, to play the cards naked. No. When I, him and Arnie Skull and were playing cribbage. No, they had clothes on. Oh, well, I know Arnie did, but I well, no, I've least. never seen Andre, and I don't want to. Anybody got pictures of that? <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> no, he wouldn't change clothes for whatever reason. You know, and we, we did wonder who had a big, can, can I? We can, yeah, you can. We wondered who had a, God, it's horrible. Who had a bigger dick, him or Virgil? Yeah. But Virgil was only like six foot, what, two? Maybe? Yeah, right around there. Yeah, and Andre seven foot four. So even Andre, this is horrible to be saying on camera. But even if Andre had a little dick, it's still going to be that big on anybody else. <laughs> well, I remember Bobby Heenan said uh, infamously, um, I guess they walked by a, a hotel room with the window open, well, the curtain open, and Andre was making love to a woman, and he said it looked like a lion was attacking a rabbit. <laughs> a lion attacking a rabbit. I thought that was rabbit. hysterical. <laughs> you know, it wasn't cruel, it wasn't... Right, yeah, it's funny as shit. But that's what he, he said, that's what it looked like. A lion was attacking a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby. Again, as we've noted, just imagine if Annie ever went after <coughs> Oh, yeah, we started the show out in Annie Denver. Still Where's my phone at? I don't know. I thought I gave it to you. No, you lost it. All right, wrestling fans, right now we got the cue from Captain Lou. We're going to take a brief timeout. We'll be back with more on the spooky. Halloween week episode of Wrestling Inside is Potty with Marty next. I gotta go to the bathroom. Wrestling fans, especially here in the Boston area, we want to thank our great friends at Red Rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts. Red Rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in Melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. 
coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans, the countdown is on to Boston Wrestling MWF's 20th anniversary bash Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Join WWE Hall of Famers Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, and Bob Backlund, Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, the Berserker, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Aldo Montoya, plus JTG of Crime Time, two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, John Cena Sr., and Oscar of Men on a Mission for for live wrestling, an autographed photo fan fest, VIP Q&A session with the kickoff to the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive in a must-see event two decades in the making. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live in Melrose November 13th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout-out as our thanks to you. Get this all Ultra rare autograph fiend and Alexa Bliss poster now. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside as it is Halloween week. One of my favorite holidays of the year. I don't know about you. Are you a Halloween guy? It, when I had, you know, one time I had to wear, uh, well, I had to do it real quick because we was on the road all the time. Yeah. And the girl I was seeing at the time, I don't want to say really, I don't want to say really his name, but um, we, we, we had to hurry because uh, I just got in and she wanted to do um, Something and I just came, yeah, <laughs> and I just came back from Hawaii and I bought her a uh, grass skirt, and you know she already had the um, the, the bikini top, but I had wow. I didn't have shit, so what I had to do is throw a sheet over over and cut little eyes so out. You're like a little a rocking ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the, here was a, of all the weird shit I've done this it ain't weird. But we went on the dance floor. It was a slow. And, you started and dancing with this sheet over you. I pulled it up a little bit oh. and stood behind her, because she. Yeah, and we we were. Oh man, you let me say stuff. It's Why a you on the computer, show, baby? But she she she. We were, we were fucking on the dance floor. People were bumping into us while we we're fucking. Because she stood like you know uh, you know we had to do it from behind. You can't do it. Well, that would be a good idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and but we're hugging. It you was know, like we love each Vegas, other. It was a yeah. slow song. We're doing this, but we're doing this, <laughs> and people were bumping us. Nobody knew we were fucking. You weren't we, doing the monster mash. <laughs> 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 we, didn't, we didn't have a little Boris Karloff action going on. He did the mash. He did <laughs> the, the monster, monster mash. mash. The monster mash. <laughs> yeah. um, Again, as we, we drift away from Survivor Series 1990. I thought we were, okay. Uh, well, we talked about The Undertaker. What did you think about you The Undertaker? You know, angle? we called it. Wrestling fans, sorry to interrupt your favorite episodes of Wrestling Insiders, but truly need your help to keep wrestling legends working in these shows produced. Get early uninterrupted 
full screen access to Wrestling Insiders, along with our studio shoot interview DVD library as seen by millions online, exclusives and more by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Check out the link to the Boston Wrestling eBay store in the description box below. If you're watching the premiere, the Super Chat button is open for business or send a donation of any size using Venmo at Boston Wrestling or PayPal using BW at BostonWrestling.com. Again, sorry to interrupt, but we can't keep giving you these free talk shows without your support. Now, back to the show. From down to where taker. Yes. You knew that? Did he take any? Uh, I don't know about I that. I don't know about that. All right, well, uh, that was actually, well, you know, I'm never going to go there. Uh, Rick Martell and his team, the Visionaries, the whole team, I think, went over on um, Jake the Snake's team. You were uh, on Rick Jake the Snake's oh, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. At Survivor Series, along yeah. with Jake and another man that was known for his medicine, uh, the Superfly Who? Jimmy Snooker. No, uh, he was not known for that. Sure. I don't know what planet you're on, then. <laughs> <laughs> he was on planet I, I mean, we, me and him did so much cocaine, I know he did it, but y'all, you didn't know it. Uh, well, if Since you did, <laughs> The first time Tony Rumble brought him in, in 1994, oh, okay, it was yeah, medicine yeah, yeah. galore. Yeah. But I tell you this, you know what's fun is you look like a complete and utter imbecile. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the most clear-headed I ever saw Jimmy was uh -oh. the last time we ever used him, the night of his funeral. Why'd you use him? We had him in oh, a Oh, you didn't mean like that. Okay, I got, we you. Did, I got um, you. I got you. We did a Jimmy Snooker appreciation night, and Lashley was on the show, Carlito was on the show, Percy was going to be on the show. Libby. But I tell you this, he, he you, you know how, yeah, hey, you know, he's, hey, but uh, usually J Jimmy was Jimmy. But <laughs> yeah, that's that a good night, way to put it. <laughs> I don't know if it's because he was traveling with his new wife or whatever was going on. Yeah, but he, he had a had, whole bunch of new wives. Not only was he great with the fans, but my Very. ex's kid was a little, you know, nervous. He, he was real little at that point. But he wanted to yeah, meet him. Yeah, but Jimmy got that look, yeah. He wanted to meet him. So I brought him up to him, and he goes, can I ask you a question? <laughs> and he goes, anything for you, little brother. Yeah, that's Jimmy. And he goes, where was your first match? Hawaii, brother. And I didn't know if that was Which just is, him. No, that's true, It though. was the truth. Yeah. I could not believe that Jimmy remembered it after seeing Jimmy. <laughs> I tell you this, I don't know if you'd remember the guy. Um, Me? That no, was one of my best friends. No, not friends. Jimmy. No, no, no. I'm, the oh. guy I'm going to mention right now is he worked as who? Who? Uh, the Pink Assassin. Uh, he Pink used assassin. to do jobs on I'm WWF sorry. TV. Pink as Assassin? Pink Assassin, the wrestling school dropout. What did he wear? He, uh, East Boston brawler. He was in part of... Uh, hey, so, let, me, let me ask you what you let think Let me about. finish the story. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. He, worked, um, Angel he worked for the Savoldis for a while. And uh, okay, I guess here, one Joe. night he roomed with Jimmy. And in the middle of the night he woke up. And Jimmy was sitting in the bed, and I imagine there was some medicine involved, and he was going, ha, 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 look at the way they pick on Curly. Look at the way they pick on Curly, brother. Do you know about this? I got Will it. you let me finish the fucking okay, story? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mother of God, you. All right, so go. Jimmy's laying on the bed naked, laughing, saying, oh. look at the way they pick on Curly from the Three Stooges. The only uh, problem was the TV wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought that story was hysterical. You know what? <laughs> Back to your story. I don't remember which one, but one time um, we was at, he, he was the main event. Uh, man, man, they loved him. You know this. They loved him in New York. Oh, big yes, time. Yes. He was the man. He might have been even above Hulk Hogan. Right? What do you think? It was pretty damn close, right there. especially before Hogan came in. If Jimmy didn't have the drug problems, he could have been Hogan. He didn't have no drug problem. He, I watched him do a whole bunch of cocaine. He had no Let problem. Let me tell you, he, that was a man with drug problems. He snorted it just like a pro. Well, <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's drug usage. Okay, so he was the main event. I don't remember who it was against. But he was the main event. It was on the damn marquee outside of my, the biggest damn, what's it called, arena? The world's most famous arena. Arena. Biggest one in the world. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. And it says Jimmy Snooker versus, I don't remember who he was. Why I got all this shit on me? 
Well, I think you're trying to get into the Halloween spirit. No, I'm trying to hide my, my hair. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a good cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Keep but going, oh, brother. Snook, oh, Snook, um, a limo, you know, a limo, and we um, a lot of cocaine there all night. <laughs> I, am I allowed to tell this? Yes, yes. Are you sure? Yeah, go ahead. We're, we, I mean, I, I ain't worried about getting in trouble. I just don't want to I don't fans. think Jimmy's going to be offended. Oh, yeah. Stop that. Well, I... <laughs> But what the fuck? Get off me! Get the fuck off me! Um, why you got this all over me? Oh, gone, I know. Gone, all right, let gone. me go with Jimmy. But you know why this right here? Do you remember that Survivor Series that um, Warrior? He walked around putting tape on us. Yes. You remember that? that that's 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 why I did this. I think. The wrong year. <laughs> that had a good couple. Anyway, keep but going. But Jimmy. But Jimmy. Bass Square Garden and it was you know what we used to do we had to park at the Ramada Inn down you know about that yep down the street and sometimes you would take an ambulance in so the fans wouldn't know you're there because if they knew you were there you can't get by you know, because they you know they surround the car and shit so we had to go you know in the ambulance and shit and and leave your car at the Ramada Inn there was a lot of good looking girls there How you NYC. Know? Brother Dosha. What more do you need to say? Uh, okay, so, but so Jimmy in a limo. He, yeah, Dan's had a couple technical difficulties. We are back. Though, Marty, your memories of Survivor Series 1990 doing the job to the visionaries. You, Jake, Sean, and Jimmy uh, in a losing effort to Rick Martel, the warlord <laughs> in power and glory. No, that was 92. No, that was sure? 1990, yeah. You did your homework? I did. Okay. Um, can I tell them something real quick? If as long as it has cheap to do with Survivor Series 90. <laughs> cheap ass toilet paper. I had All to go right. shit a while. Okay. That's fine. All right, so um, I, the, with the, we've gone, I wanted to get through this in one episode. Okay, and let's in, do uh, who, uh, let's, who, oh, Your memories of that match that night, Survivor Series 90. You, you were on they, Jake Roberts' they, team. Rick Mitel's entire team went over to go on to the sole Survivor no, no, match. No, one of them got eliminated. Who got eliminated? I don't remember. Was it? I thought it was the whole team that survived. Because they went on to face Hogan, Warrior, and Tito that one year. That's they, how it worked. Yeah, the, that, that was the only year they did it. They did. I oh, think really? it was called the, the Ultimate Survivor. And I was match. there, and I don't remember that. Everybody that went over, that won their match, went on to like a finals match. You sure? Yeah, so like DiBiase, he won his match, so he went on to that finals. Oh, the team did. Rick Martel's team, no, just the whoever survived the match went on to the final Survivor match of the night. For, it was Hogan, what? Warrior, and Tito against, I think it was DiBiase and Rick Martel's entire team that survived. And obviously Hogan and Warrior went on so they could pose to end the show. But you have memories of the match itself, Monty. Tito, if I can speak on that. All right. I love Tito. Yeah. Great guy, man. Great guy. You know what he does? 50, well, I can't, I can't tell you his price on TV. What does he do? Why don't you, why don't you get him for our show? I wouldn't be opposed to it, but what does he do? You were going to just say something a minute ago. Um, I can't tell it on TV, but... Well, as long yeah, as, you're, hey, not, don't as, long as you're not giving up... Go ahead. Don't, don't listen. Cause right. he, he, I can't say the price. It is reasonable, kind of. But, um, and, he, and he does like Rod Van Dam. He's like, if you don't want it, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Tito, ain't he a teacher? He's a teacher, and his wife runs a pretty successful hair salon, like our friends over at Noel Salon on Green Street in Melrose. Why are you not there no more? Uh, you, you messed up, did The you? coronavirus. That's not why. <laughs> no, business, business went down, you know? It was like 1990 in WWF with the Warrior as the champion. <laughs> he was the coronavirus in 1990. <laughs> no, he, he was kind of... I love the brother, man, but he, damn, just, he, he, was, he wasn't he was the guy. He was difficult. He was a great part of the package, but he was, I guess it's fair to Why say, Why are you on the computer? Alone. we got to talk to our people. I'm trying to try multitask. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is I don't think yeah, he, was, trying to say? he was a great part of a package of the top four or five guys, but I don't think he was ever the guy. You don't think he was what? The guy. Or? To carry the company. Mm, kind of when they started having him beat Andre. I think he was a great part of a package of the top five, but 
but I don't think Touchdown? he was the guy. That's actually your safety when they oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, boy. any ma any memories of that match itself with Which Jake one? Roberts' team against Rick Martel's team in Hartford, Connecticut, Thanksgiving <sighs> night, 1990 at Survivor Series? Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Or it was a good-looking girl sitting ringside. Yeah. And she was wearing her damn. It was a tube top, and it was. You could actually see the top. Is it, is it called brown? Like your nipples? Yeah. Brown. Yeah. You. This is horrible. Um, That's all right. Lou is a big nipple guy. Who? Lou. L professionals. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh yeah, from that one. Oh man, and and you know what ended up happening? What happened? If one of us got with her, I forgot which one. You or uh, Sean? Uh, no, I think Kurt. Oh, shit, I didn't say that. Kurt, really? Yeah, in case his family's watching. He never, you know what, he, Kurt was such a good family man. He was a great family yes, man, except he, when he had a rat. Yeah. Is that the way to put it? Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but he, did, he didn't mess around a lot. He, it wasn't something he did regularly. Is that a good yes. way to put it? Yeah. Oh. You know who else didn't? Rick Rude. And you want to know something? And they were best friends. I'll say this, and, and, and I am big on monogamy. I am big on respect to the family. You but ain't been with when nobody. When you were on the road for, in those days, they bullshit people now. Oh, they're on this. They haven't been on the road 300 days a I year know. since the mid-90s. Uh, yeah, I know. That's bullshit. But well, when you guys really were on the road 300 days a year, I mean, there is a level of loneliness that goes along with that. There's Nothing. a level of... Uh, you if you don't go to the club, You want to yeah. have some companionship outside of the boys you go to at the times. Club. Yeah. And I mean, uh, do I think it's right cheating on a spouse? No. But in the profession that you are in, is it understandable? I think so. We, we always said this, love on the run or get none. Well, I don't know about that, but... No, I do. Well, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. All right, uh, any other memories of Survivor Series 1990? That Obviously, one? the Hulkster went over. Rick Rude was going to be in that main event match, but uh, he had his issue over the SummerSlam Why payoff. Do you, how do you remember better than me and I was there? Because you were doing a lot of drugs, Marty. <laughs> Not a lot. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, the only other thing I remember... Do you remember anything about your match? Mm-mm. No. Oh, I, Do you yeah, like I, the gimmick I, that they did with Jake Roberts' eye? <laughs> I thought that, I thought that was really cool. Oh, when Rick Martel mm -hmm. sprayed him with the yeah, uh, yeah, 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 arrogance yeah. and one of his, because to me as a kid, I thought yeah. it was real. You know, I, I, I hate it. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Okay. Um, one time when um, was it Monster? Who kissed Cheryl? Brood. Br uh, mm mm. When they did the angle it was with Cheryl Randy, Sa Randy Savage and, 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 and Jake's um, angle. That was in 91, but Cheryl okay. Roberts was, was, was 1988. Cheryl Roberts, yeah. She was there. Well, who kissed Cheryl her? Cheryl Roberts' only well, angle Randy was with Rick Rude. No, Randy kissed her. That's why the whole damn story. No, 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 no. Jake was a heel. Not, wait, the Randy and Jake feud started when they went to the Undertaker and Jake interrupted the wedding ceremony. <laughs> The, uh, thank you, Captain. Safety? <laughs> um, that was in 91. In 88, yeah, right yeah, after... Yeah, that sounds right, because Sean and I were still tagging. Yeah, in 88, you, it was right well, before well, you well, came well, here's in. here's what I remember. All right, what do you remember? Uh, and I think somebody kissed... Uh, um, oh, no, you know, Elizabeth kissed Elizabeth. Jake kissed Elizabeth. I don't think he... Well, you get off the I camera. don't think he I mean, kissed think, her. I think he slapped no, her. No, he kissed her. I think her. he slapped her. Kissed her. I was there. Fans and, at and, home. Were, fans was, at home. I want you to Google it. Someone's yes. got to know. And watch and see who's wrong. Are you wrong? Uh, I love betting. If I'm wrong, I'm, I'll say, you know you me. I'll wrong. say I'm wrong. And, well, here's the reason I know for sure. Because Randy and, and, and Jake, uh, when they did the, you know, the thing, the first night, the first night that they you know, went at it, Ran, Randy went out. Jake was already in the ring. Uh, Randy went out. and You know, he did his pose and he's doing all that. And when he came back from the ring, I'm like, yeah, because I love Randy and, you know, uh, very much respect. But I asked him, I said, why would you go out there and pose? This guy just kissed your wife. And he goes, 
God damn it, I knew it. And he ran over to cuss Jake out. Because he cause he said he knew that. Jake Jake Jake's one of the best ever. Jake we won't see him soon. Why you got me wearing toilet paper? Because it's Halloween week and I guess you want oh, to look like true. a mummy yeah, or I don't more. know what, what look you're going for. But yeah, that happened. Um because uh, Randy was I'm, Randy was I'm ninety percent sure it was a slap. Do you even if it was, because it was during your, that great angle uh, no, when he I think kiss, hit him but, with the snake in the arm. Oh, that was a And Elizabeth was, came out and tried to save him, and I think either he shoved her or he gave her a little slap. Kissed her. I, I, there was no kiss. Right. The kiss, the the Jake what? Roberts angle with the kiss was when Rick Rude do came got, over to we, um, Rick hey, Rude. Brother. When Rick Rude came over to. Here's your friend. Hey. When Rick Rude and Cheryl Roberts had the angle at ringside, but that was right before you came in in 1988. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you what I know. I was there. All right, we're going overtime, I guess. Tell me what you know. <laughs> oh, are we out of time? Um, yeah. What happened was Jake kissed um, Elizabeth, and. And they mm. did, uh, you know, they did. I think you're talking about the same time with the snake thing. Yeah, Randy was it, stuck it, in the ropes, yeah, and yeah, the snake yeah. came out and bit him in the yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? That snake really did bite the shit. Oh, out. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he bit the shit out of him. And you know what? Randy was so cool. I, if it had been me, I'd have beat the fuck out of that. Snake. I'd have beat the hell out of that snake. Yeah. But Randy, you know, for for the show, like, just took it, <laughs> and he was grinding. You yes. Saw that? He was grinding. But um, I hope he got a little extra something in the envelope. That's up to Vince. <laughs> but we'll get there in 1991. Again, oh, yeah, what year are we at? We're at Survivor Series 90. Any memories of that match that you were in? No, nothing. It was meaningless to you. <laughs> it wasn't meaningless, but <laughs> I told you. The, the, the girl ringside had the big ass titties. Oh, well, that had nothing to do with Survivor Series 90. Oh, you 90. mean the match? All right, oh, wrestling yeah, fans, okay. we hope you have a tremendous Halloween. Um, the Mummy is going to be unmummified next week when we continue to break down the World Wrestling Federation in the year 1990. Again, don't forget, fans, tickets are a-flying. Those VIP packages, if they're not gone by the time you see this, they're going to be gone. Saturday night, November the 13th, Memorial Hall, Melrose, Massachusetts. Two blocks down the road that way, we celebrate two decades of this great organization the only way we know how when we go back to the 80s. Again, tickets on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. What's wouldn't that? that? Wasn't in a movie, Back to the 80s? Uh, Michael Maybe, Fox I don't or know. Jay Fox well, that was Back to the Future. Oh, Back to the Future. You need to go Back to the Future, but that's a different story <laughs> for a different time. For Marty Gennetti, <laughs> I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next Thursday night at 10 p.m. <laughs> on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. You and yours, be well. Good night from Boston. Love y'all. Thank you for joining us. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great content. Don't forget, you can help keep wrestling legends working. Check out our eBay store and join the Boston Wrestling family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling so we can produce more in-depth shoot interviews.